Okay, in the last video, I talked about the Bruish Pagan test for heteroscedasticity, where we were using our residuals as a dependent variable and regressing those on uh, all the explanatory variables to see if there is any correlation between our residuals and uh, any of the explanatory variables. And the rejection of the null hypothesis implies there is heteroscedasticity in the model. In this video, I'm going to talk about a general test for heteroscedasticity and this is called the white test for heteroscedasticity and uh, the idea about the previous uh, video was that we first squared these residuals that we get from our estimated model and regress these on uh, all of uh, these uh, explanatory variables but we are considering only the linear relationship between these residuals and all these x variables what if our dependent variable and our explanatory variables are quadratically related to each other that is we need to include quadratic function in this model so i'm going to include gamma 1 x1 squared up to gamma k and xk squared in the model so now if any of these gammas is statistically significant it implies that there is some sort of heteroscedasticity in the model we can go even further and say that there may be some interaction in effect between all these variables that is x1 and x2 up to eta k x k minus 1 x k that is now we are introducing these interaction terms in the model now if any of these interaction term or the coefficient on these interaction terms is statistically significant even if uh, these deltas and gammas are not statistically significant but any of these eta is statistically significant will say that there is heteroscedasticity in the model but the problem is running at this type of regression will imply including a lot of explanatory variables in the model which will eat up all of our degrees of freedom so this guy why he came up with a smart solution so he said that instead of running all these uh, explanatory variables on the right hand side why not calculate the fitted values from uh, our model and now our fitted model will implicitly have all these variables on the right hand side so uh, this means that we are including this equation on the right hand side plus we can introduce the square of uh, y hat in the model as well now this y hat will include not only all these variables in the square form this form but it will also include all these cross products why because we know that uh, the square of a plus b equals a squared plus b squared plus 2ab so now we have uh, these cross products as well if we take the square of this it will include all these uh, cross products or interaction terms as well so now all we have to do is check the hypothesis that whether delta 1 and delta 2 are equal to 0 and we can use either f test or LM test to test uh, this hypothesis and the rejection of this null hypothesis means that there is some sort of uh, heteroscedasticity in the model so this was a smart way of uh, dealing with the heteroscedasticity now this uh, white test is more general than uh, the previous Bruch Pagan test and here we are including only three coefficient values which means we are saving a lot of degrees of freedom which uh, this model may eat up so I'm going to use this example that I showed you earlier and here my first model is level level model where we are interested in the house price depending on lot size square footage and uh, bedroom size and uh, my second model is uh, the log log model. So next I'm going to apply this Y test on this uh, model. So again I'm using this BP test and my first argument here is my regression equation that I saved earlier and this is my level level model and then this tilde means i'm regressing the residuals on the fitted values and the square of the fitted values so like this equation i'm running this equation let's get the results so we got a very small p value which means uh, we reject our null hypothesis and conclude that there is heteroscedasticity in the model so this is the same thing that we found in the bruish pagan test that there is heteroscedasticity in this level level model next we're going to test whether there is heteroscedasticity in the log log model and again i'm using the 
quadratic function of uh, the fitted values on the right hand side of this model and calculate the uh, p-value for the y test. Looking at this uh, p-value which is 0.17 which means we are rejecting this null hypothesis only at 15 percent which means we fail to reject our null hypothesis and conclude that our model is homoscedastic. So again there are two tests that you can use to test for heteroscedasticity in the model and the first was the bruish pagan test and the next one is uh, the y test and the advantage of the y test is that you can save a lot of degrees of freedom and you can test for homoscedasticity which is not only linear but also non-linear and you can also include these interaction terms and you cannot test for these uh, interaction terms and uh, quadratic functions in uh, the bruish pagan test. So the y test is a little bit more comprehensive. Okay, I'll see you in the next video to talk about uh, weighted least squares.